What is going on guys, Bingo here, and I got the Dual Factory with me for the first installment of the X2 Drop podcast. We wanted to start this to discuss our tournament experiences, the meta, tech cards, pretty much anything. We enjoy the game uh, and enjoy talking about it and going over I don't know about enjoy the game, but we try very hard. (laughs) Yeah, so... uh, I got the dual factory here, so we're gonna. We just went to a regional yesterday. Um, it's pretty much the first one we went to since Salomon Great format. So he played Danger Orcus. I played Necroz. So I'm gonna let him go through over his tournament experience first, and I'll go through mine, and then we'll just go from there. All right. So as he said, I played Danger Orcus yesterday. I'm actually trying to get my deck list popped up in front of me while we're actually recording. But um, overall, I think I like the deck a lot. I think it's real nice. Um, the reasoning behind it is because I feel like it could play through any hand trap other than Lancia that's re- recently resurged in the meta, but we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, as far as the like deck build goes, a lot of it, you kind of just want one card uh, ways to get into Mermaid, but you also want to be able to resolve your Mermaid. Um, so I, ex- I know you are between Danger Orcus, Salomon Great, and I think you contemplated Thunder quite a bit right yeah those were the three decks that i chose um if you guys have been following the channels i've been playing salaman great a lot uh by far i think it's the most consistent deck that we have access to right now um the reasoning i didn't want to play it however is even though i'd be fine in the mirror playing mirror matches and Yu-Gi-Oh is easily my least favorite thing to do so i didn't want to play that um i had been playing thunder a lot before salaman great and then the orcus deck to surface um, I think its matchups are really good. The only problem is I don't think it has a play going second. Uh, the builds now that you see, they have Thunder Guard Dragon. They're like They're just focused on building turn one boards that are huge and just going for game. But the problem is, unlike the Orcus deck, is why I chose, this, chose Orcus over Thunder, is it can't play through hand traps as well. Like if you stop the Roar, if you stop the Saryuja, so on and so forth, it just, it just bricks out of nowhere. So... That's one of the reasons I like the Orcus deck a lot is because a lot of the me- the hand traps that are good against the meta aren't good against it, such as Droll, Ash is okay. Um, no one's really playing Oak. That's kind of a scary one, but you can play around that one pretty easily. Uh, like I said, Droll and Lockbird does absolutely nothing to you because you don't search. You search yeah. once in the combo, and that is to get the rank up spell. You, you search to trigger Droll, and after that, like that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it, literally. And then at that point, you're just clear to go from... From point A to point B, no problem. And then the combos itself, they're honestly not that hard. You just have to learn how to play around certain situations. Like, for example, if your mermaid get That's one of the interesting things about my deck list is I ended up playing three danger... Uh, not three danger, but three Orcus Tor Harp. He's the one that special summons from the deck. And I felt it was important to play three versus the traditional one that a lot of the engines are playing. Because if your mermaid gets stopped, but you still haven't used a normal summon, which is a common theme in the deck, is you can make mermaid without ever having used a normal summon... You still have access to your full combo. You just have to go about it a little differently, and that's why I really like. Yeah, because besides uh, Sky Blaster, like what other normal summons do you play? The only normal summons you really play in the deck. I mean, you could con- technically consider the Danger normal summons, but they're more extenders than anything. Um, one of the things I've seen catching popularity ever since Dusseldorf is playing Neo Space Connector. Um, having access to Dolphins is actually really huge because instead of having to play around the hand trap, you can just take the hand trap straight out of the hammer force and to use it prematurely. Especially in the case of Ash Blossom, because they have to Ash the Connector or they're going to lose it. So that's why I really like playing Connector. Um, another cool thing that we did is in my list, I also played the Sky Striker engine, because me and um, my buddy Aldo, we were talking about it. If you open Engage, you can go Engage to get your drawn like every other regular sh- Sky Striker combo goes. But when you add back with the Kagari that you're going to make off the token, instead of uh, adding back Hornet Drone, you add back Engage. So you can add Eagle Booster, which is basically a searchable Call of Grave that forces your Mermaid through. But other than that, you only have like five to six dedicated normal summons. Back. Okay. Um, so I know we we talked about the deck list quite a bit. And there's outside of the three harp, it's pretty standard, right, from your list? For the most and part, the eagle booster. So the harps and the eagle booster. For the most part, like you're playing just the regular eleven danger. Um, for a while there, I was convinced that you should play twelve. The twelfth one being uh, Bigfoot, only because it can out floodgates and whatnot. But I ended up cutting Greffer from my list, 
So we decided not. I decided not to play that and just go with the eleven that a lot of people were playing. And honestly, I had no complaints about those. Uh, the PK engine was fine. I don't think you should play more than what we have for that. Especially uh, the PK cards are good, but you don't ever want to see them in your hand. Like for example, the only the cards I play were the Brigadine, the rank up spell, and then I opted to play one Fog Blade, which was kind of cool because if you draw any of those one of those three cards that you don't want to that you don't want to see in your opening hand. You can just go get the other one. It's just another line of negation, which I thought. Yeah, it's just one card dedication to an extra form of interruption. It's usually mm-hmm. pretty worth it. Uh, drawing boots isn't the worst thing in the world, but any of the other ones are pretty bad. Yeah, like it's just another normal summon in your hand at that point. Yeah, I mean, like cloak if, does. If you can get to a uh, bardish before using it, like it's a free special. So it, it's the only one that's not like a horrible draw. Right. Uh, but yeah, just like, you just want to minimize the, st- the bad cards in your opening hand. Because ev- honestly, that almost every card, and that's why I like a lot about it. You broke up and then, a little bit, what'd you say? Uh, with When you look at your list, every card in your opening hand, what I like about the deck, it's all broken. They all do something that's insane. And that's what I really liked about it. The yeah. I, I would say the, the weakest card in the deck was probably Sky Blaster, but even then... It's one of those cards that baits out hand traps, so... Yeah, I mean, Sky Blaster baits the uh, Veilers or Impermanents because they're the only... It's the only thing that is going to get hit, or it's only going to get hit by those, and that's those are really bad for your Mermaid, so you can look at it either way. Exactly. And then as far as the matchups go, uh, I ended up playing... I'm trying to think of it because I know I played three or four, three to four Salaman Grad. I can't remember the t- off the top of my head. Um... I only played one Thunder Dragon, and honestly, that matchup was the buy for this deck. And then, surprisingly, I got caught not paying attention, played a BA player. That was kind of unfortunate. Yeah, you, you took the L in time, right? Or, like, close to it? Yeah, and that's where... Um, hand track. So, that matchup, that was probably the most interesting of the day that I ended up having. Um, I lost the die roll, but he made me go first, which I thought was kind of odd, so I couldn't kind of get a read of what he was playing. And I, as a thought, comboed him. He drew a six card in his next game. So then the following game, I did the same. He did the same thing. He made me go for it again. So I went for the combo, but he looked at me and he said that none of my cards are a kaiju. If my six cards are a kaiju, I want, then I don't scoop. Six card was a uh, Kamungus, and I lost the game from there. Yeah. Uh, I did only one of the only decks I didn't test against or like consider was BA, and I, I took the loss to BA as well. So. Um, but the Salomon Great matchup for you is pretty pretty easy, right? The Salomon, yeah, the Salomon Great matchup is actually really good for this deck, and the reason behind that is the only real form of negation that they have that's honestly troubling would be Roar. And even then, most Salomon Great players, if they know what they're what you're playing, they'll go for Rage instead because honestly, having multiple field is harder to deal with than having multiple negations. Yeah, if that makes sense. But a lot of the times, what ends up happening is you play through their one roll, and then you just kill them after, like after you just play with it without ever having to go into your. Role. Yeah, go, going in, up against the Salaman great player, I just always assume they have uh, roar, ash, and either Valor and permanent turn one, which is which is pretty standard, and that deck, will, that they can play through that pretty easily. I will give them credit though for one thing: the fact that they ma- they can main deck so many diverse hand traps is what makes that matchup kind of scary. But as long as you are able to navigate through the hand traps, you should find. Yeah, for for your deck, it's not that impactful. But being able to add back Ash to their hand and just keep using it is that could be really hard to play through for a lot of the like tier two decks. Yeah, that's why I wanted to make the commitment of playing like Connector in the main deck and all playing through specifically for that reason. So, so you lost to um, BA and what was the other, uh, what was the other one? Salomon Great. Salomon Great. And then you took a draw to what? You, of course. <laughs> I just wanted you to say it. Yeah, yeah. I figured. Uh, so uh, the event was it was pretty good. And going into round nine, we were both X2, and then we got paired up against each other for round nine. And we ended up drawing, not because we chose to, but because we actually went into time. So... It was a pretty good event. Anything you would change for for your list? Uh, the main deck, as of right now, I probably won't make any changes. I might try to 
great called by the grave, but that's a stretch from that. Um, the extra deck I would definitely change for sure. Well, there was a couple cards that I wouldn't want to play again. Like what? So looking at it, um, just off the top of the head, I can tell you right now, I for some reason I don't know this, Hold but on. I opted to. Oh, can you still hear me now? Yeah, I can. Okay. So I don't know why I opted to play these, but Top Logic Bomber Dragon I played because everyone kept telling me it was an honorary Orcus card. Uh, that being said, I pro you probably shouldn't play it till the new X Y Z comes out, the rank eight, because I there was never a situation I wanted to summon it. Like it was cute in theory, but it just wasn't very good. Yeah, I f I felt like people play it for the grind game. You know, it's an easy link four you can get into, um, and then you can just have Babel on the field and trigger it. So like if you're all down to one or two cards, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, well, you you should never get to that point, and if you are, you're probably in a losing situation. Exactly. Um, Borlode Savage Dragon was another card I played because I was playing Destrudo in my list. Uh, looking back at it, the theory behind it was sound, but in actual game application, I just never made it. Yeah, it just like, like it doesn't come up. Yeah, it was just sitting there taking up space. Like your hand has to be incredibly broken for this card to ever hit the field. And it just, like I said, it never happened. So, yeah, that's probably going to come out. Um, there was Borlo Dragon in here, too, that I was playing, because I thought Thunder would be a little bit more popular than it actually was. And even against the one Thunder player that I was playing, I never summoned it, it never came up. I just made Boral Sword and killed him. Uh, what would you play instead? So, I would for sure uh, make room for Space Insulator. Uh, the reason being is it's a lot better with your... Uh, Phantom Skyblaster, because it's a generic link too that can be made with tokens. And it's also dark attribute, which the Orcus card's locking in the dark attribute for the term. And that came up once or twice where I needed to be able to make something to get into him, and I didn't have it, so I had to go a different route. Uh, another card I'd probably consider playing since I'm playing Skyblaster is Saryuja. Just being able to make Saryuja before you do your Orcus combo and get Th four additional cards deeper into your deck and kind of sculpt your hand to see the route you want to go is really important. Plus, that's another card that baits out hand traps that doesn't stop your Orcus combo. So I would consider playing that. And then the only other thing I would consider is Time Thief Redoer. Although I think it's a really good generic rank four that you can go into. And um, one of the reasons I wanted to play it over Evil Swarm Thanos or Thanatos is because you can it can be made with a space connector that was summoned previously in your turn. Looking forward, I would probably instead just play Evil Swarm Thanatos because that card doesn't lose to Pancratops. Um, but whichever way you look at it, whatever XYZ you're playing or anything like that, they're all going to lose to a Kaiju of some sort. So, Yeah, because you, you can't activate that freaking rank up spell until they do something, so... Most yeah, but you can't of, you, know, act, you can't activate outs, it until the main phase. Yeah, most of the outs are pretty overlapping, but there's those just niche situations. Right, but once a dark neostorm comes out, that it completely changes. Like it really does. Yeah, is it? You think the deck's going to shift to ranking up into Kaliuga? It's either uh, what ends up happening instead of Kaliuga, the X Y Z you get. It's a rank eight. So what'll probably end up happening is you switch over to making true king of calamities. Oh yeah, that, that's. What and I'm the cool doing. thing, the cool thing about that, it, it eliminates Pankratops and Twin Twister being outs because you can use the rank up magic your first turn. Because as a thought, the idea behind as a thought is you want to summon as a thought on their turn to turn them off for monster effects. Whereas true king of all calamities doesn't have that problem. Yeah. So. And then, because of that, with Dark Neostorm coming out, the the Top Logic Bomber Drive becomes a lot better than what it is now, especially with the rank 8, because it prevents your cards from being destroyed. So, you just have a, you have a makeable nuke on your field at all times, plus you get a counter trap. So, I don't think the main deck changes dramatically, but what you do turn 1 will change dramatically. Yeah, I feel like going against the Calamities... It's just, it's always hard. Uh, there's just never been a rank nine turbo deck that's consistent enough. I mean, we had to, we had the true king deck, but they took away the best true king, so. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, side deck. What'd you side? So, for my side deck, it was a little different than usual, but I, so I sided three Phantasmae. 
this was mainly for your Sky Striker decks and anything that was Dragon Con. Um, I elected to play two DD Crow in the main because of the popularity of Salamon Great, which this card was really good for me. And just taking away their roars and stuff like that, so they just end on their board of their monsters that don't really have like any way to interact with you. Makes your game really easy. Um, I also cited Radiant the Multidimensional Kaiju, and I cited two Dinosaur Pankratops. Uh, the reasoning behind those is the the reason we play Radiant is because you want to be able to still summon a kaiju if you've had to Orcus combo prematurely. Um, it being dark attributes good. It's also just a high enough attack points where you can summon on your opponent's size field and use it to kill them with Moral Sword. Uh, Pankratops was kind of... I don't want to say it was mediocre, but it didn't perform how I wanted it. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, not, I noticed that quite a bit. That's what I, I wanted to play it, but it's just its applications aren't as important as they were two months ago or a month ago. Right, I think a month or two ago, it was a lot better before we had all these uh, Orcus decks and Salmon Great decks going around. Uh, and then the last six cards were just cards basically made go- making fir- going first easier, like Called by the Grave and Twin Twister. Okay. After, though, playing this event, I would probably want to find room to main deck by the Grave. But... Yeah, that's one thing I, I was going to say is Called by the Grave. I definitely want to move into the main if I can. Yeah. So... Oh. Overall, it wasn't a bad event. We didn't get top eight, which is what we were there for, uh, especially going into uh, like the final round. You know, X two going in the final round is always like a weird situation to be in. Yeah, there's always going to be a couple of them that squeak in at X two, but uh, it is what it is. So uh, again, Danger Orcus. So me, I I volunteered to play the rogue deck of the format. In my opinion, Necro. Can we? Can we stop and appreciate that you didn't choose to play the deck? You volunteered to yeah. play Necroz. Yeah, Necroz, you know, I love it. I, I feel like it has some pretty good matchups across the board. It has some horrible matchups, which is why it's not doing as good. It's just how, how lucky do you feel going into the event because you take a hard L to Danger th- uh, Thunder Dragon. You have a really hard time with any back row decks, sub terror, uh, which I didn't see like any sub terror. Yeah, Guru Control wasn't very popular for the event, and that was kind of weird. It's probably because it's expensive. It's just as expensive as, like, Salomon Great, but it's a worse deck. So, like, why not just buy Salomon Great? Yeah, play something that's more consistent, honestly. I mean, to be fair, you have eight ways into Guru, so... Yeah, so... uh, I'm going to pull up my list so that we can look at it while I talk about it. I think it was this one... Uh, yeah, this looks about right. So this is the list I played. The side deck's a little incomplete. Uh, these should be Thanos dragons, but the deck performed really well. Um, round one, I played against Danger Orcus. I lost the die roll, and that was pretty scary. Um, anytime I have to go second game one, I, I'm feeling pretty bad because I'm playing Zaborg, which I would actually cut after this event as well as the Vanity's Ruler combo. I was saying in the past with like Zaborg and stuff like that, when you summon it, especially going first, that's almost... Yeah, and, and that's what happened game two. I, I Zaborged. It was actually a very risky play because I had to tribute over... I had, a, I had to tribute over a Candle summoned off of Chalice Slime, as well as just Unicorn. So it was like an all-in, like, I'm either going to do this or I'm going to lose. Uh, so if you Valor it or permanent it, I would have just took the loss. And then game three, we went into time, and I cowboyed. I went first, I cowboyed. He had two and a half minutes left. He just didn't have enough time to combo. I'd Valken hand anyway. How that? How that feel? That, that was just... that was pretty great. I kept I kept looking at the clock. And my heart's fucking racing. I got uh, Manju and Unicorn on the board, and I'm like, screw it. What's the worst that could happen? I got Valken hand. If he's got called by the grave, I lose. But, Let's just take a minute to appreciate that the year is 2019. Shrit bit back to one. There's no Senju in this deck, and this man with the new time rules is playing Gaga Ga Cowboy and got a victory. Yeah, so that, so that was pretty good. Uh, game two or round two, I don't remember what I played. Uh, something something pretty easy, I think. And then round three is my second loss because that was BA. And that was just unfortunate. I misplayed it. If I searched Valk instead of Gungnir, 
uh, I would have won, but I forgot Yazi can't be targeted. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had Kloss in on the I had Kloss and Unicor on the field, and he farfed he farfed Unicor away, and I was like, okay, I know he's got Destrudo and Grave, but so I took that loss pretty badly. Game one, I opened unplayable. Game two, Vanity's ruler, he couldn't literally couldn't do anything. And then game three, it was a grind, but he got it. That's one of the things I found interesting with your deck is you're actually opting to play the Vanity combo because you're playing Ben 10, right? Yep. Uh, any any boss monster that's searchable, I think, just beats out any like anything that's inconsistent. You, it's just not worth playing because yeah, it could resolve half your games or 30 percent of your games. But what about the other where you top deck it for your seventh card and then it's just dead? Right. Because that was one of the reasons I, I lost a game later in the tournament is I was just a grind match, and I drew two Zaborg in three turns. And I just can't do anything with them. So after that, it was uh, it was pretty good. Uh, round seven, I played against a true Draco player, which was pretty scary, but Danko Seca is a pretty good card. So, oh yeah, your so, true Draco matchup is kind of scary now. Yeah, I think about it, it's really it's really hard, especially uh, when they open multiple floodgates, having to play through. Um, there there can only be ones, not too bad. That's why I actually side it. But goes in match is really hard to deal with. Yeah, because a lot of your opening plays don't even start with water monsters. They're either light or right? yeah. Uh, all all your enablers, your incantations, manju, they're all they're they're not the same attribute as your uh, your actual good cards. So that that was scary. But Danko, I drew Danko two games in a row. I just made him go. Uh, I made him go first game two, which I don't think he saw coming after I took the loss game one, and then game three he chose to go first. But. He won the die roll because I asked him how many cards were in his extra deck, and he said zero, so I got really upset. <laughs> <laughs> and then well, the last round, I played against this guy right here, and we, we just drew. I couldn't, I didn't draw any way to make Cowboy going into uh, game yeah. three. So. To be fair, the most disrespectful thing that happened to me this weekend actually was round when I completely was forgot that. Sorry, you cut out. The most disrespectful thing that happened to me this weekend was when Vanity's Rule and Unicorn me, and I was, I wasn't salty at the time, or I was trying not to be salty, but I could feel it just swelling up inside of me. Yeah, and that's like, that combo is extremely consistent compared to you know hard drawing as a Borg. And turn one, how, like how do most decks out a ruler and a Unicorn? It's like one's not a problem, you know, impermanence is a card. But having to get over both is pretty difficult. You have to think about it. They have to have two impermanents because Valor's going to do nothing on. Them. Yep, that's the best part. Yep. Uh, th- changes I would make. I would. I definitely want to uh, cut Zaborg, like I said. Um, max out on Manju. I'm. I'm definitely going to play two Mirror. That came up three or four times, and I didn't think it would. But two Necros Mirror, and I'm debating cutting Kaleidoscope to one is the hardest card to resolve mid to late game. But since I do have more space for targets, you know, I might keep it at two. It's just going to require a little bit more thought. I um, and the extra deck is going to completely change because I'm not playing as a Borg. So. You can literally dedicate all your space to like Kaleido stuff and whatnot. Yeah, Kaleido, Super Poly. Um, Reaper's not that good, but it's at least more of an option than... Um, Maybe even play Exiton. Who knows? One of the beautiful things about your deck. Yeah. But I'm hoping that we're going to get some love on the ban list in April for this deck. I don't think it... I'm not expecting anything crazy like Unicorn or 2 or 3, but having some options is a lot better than having what we have now. Emerald to 1. Hold on. We don't need Emerald to 1. It would be nice. Avarice to one would uh, would be great, but all right. This... Hold on, give me one minute, John. Yeah. So after after this tournament, I I definitely there there's no other regionals by us. So what I'm gonna do with this deck is 
keep testing it, try to raise the consistency, which sounds really weird for a deck that can search it search in toolbox it's the entire deck on turn one. But being able to get the consistency for whatever your win condition is more frequently, like Van I think Vanity's Ruler is the best way to go. I'll say that time and time again because all you need is Brio and an Incantation, and then you have three other cards in your hand to establish Unicorn. So uh, that's where I'm going to go with the deck. S my side deck choice is Danko Seca was insane for what I wanted it to do. Uh, Sphere Mode, this uh, for the Danger Thunder deck, I was playing Sphere Mode, and I actually I had it. You know, he had Double Colossus, um, Zombie Stein, plus uh, Hot Red. And I attributed over the uh, Double Colossus and the Hot Red. But it, it wasn't enough because it, it was a Game 3 situation. And even though we got to that game state, he's got big-ass dragons that aren't from the extra deck. This deck has such a problem dealing with big monsters that aren't from the, from the extras. The biggest of dragons. Yeah, so he actually won... Uh, we he he won with about two minutes left in time, and the reason was because I couldn't out a roar that was double boosted by Matrix. Wait, you had to deal with what double boosted by Matrix? Uh, Thunder Dragon Roar. That, I, I, how could, did I, the, I couldn't out it. How did the game state get to the point where the hardest thing to deal with was a? Th so, it was a uh, I, I trished him right, and then uh, I had enough to clear his board on field. But he had he had a roar and a matrix in hand, which was unknown. So I tr Trish attacked into the 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 roar, and Trish died, and then it just kept going. Like it was top decking situation. So that's yeah. You it, lost you lost to a guy that's playing a card that's honestly obsolete in that build, and that has to be upsetting. Yeah, <laughs> I mean just the fact that you know I lost I lost the die roll. Um, and it took that long for me to lose to, I think, the worst matchup. You know, I, was, I, was, I wasn't horribly upset, but I was, I was a little salty. That's insane. <laughs> uh, Super Poly never came up for me. Uh, in theory, it's still worth playing, right? Right, in theory, but, like, it's a one-of. Yeah, I mean, since I'm not playing Zaborg, my extra deck, I mean, I gotta play two targets for it. It's really not the end of the world. I know in testing, when uh, our buddy Doug was playing Guru Control, he was main decking Super Poly, and I swear to God, that card's glued to his hand. Every game. Doug's graced by the Yu-Gi-Oh gods, but his uh, technical play is not. His motor, his uh, technical play is to be desired, and we'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> Improve every day. We try at least. We try very hard. All right, so... One thing that you kept saying round after round is Lancey is a hell of a card. All right. So a little backstory here for those of you who are just now joining us and have never played Yu-Gi-Oh! back in 2015. Lancia used to be a god card for a hand trap. It was broken against Necroz. And there are like a couple of other rogue matchups that was a good against like Ritual Beasts. That, that was a really good one to have. But Lancia against Orcus is literally the only thing you can't play through. And vice versa, because Lancia is being cited more heavily now, because it also, I think, affects uh, Necros a lot, too. Now, I don't know if you played anyone who cited Lancia. No, I, I think a lot of the inexperience from, uh, you know, a lot of the players these days either don't remember or have like don't even know what the deck does. Like, every almost every opponent had to read my cards, so right. they, they don't know, even if they're citing it, I don't think they know to put it in. Right. But me personally, I know within my first three rounds, I got Lancey. And that is honestly backbreaking because what will end up happening is you do your regular doing, especially once you have gone through and kind of like felt through the hand, see what kind of hand traps they have and they haven't done anything. So when you go to the nightmare play and then you link Orcus nightmare and uh, mermaid into your Galatea, when it resolves, if you don't have the field spell up, they Lancia you, and then your turn ends because you can't summon any more of your Orcus monsters. And it is honestly the worst feeling in the world because then you can't activate the effects of your 
PK cards in the graveyard, your Orcus ends in a shutoff, and the only thing you have access to is da- your danger cards, and you have to have at least two or three in your hand to be able to play. Yeah, and then even if you do, like, what do you, what, like, what's your end game? There's not much. Like, if at the turn that someone lances you, if you have the cards in hand to do it, you have to kill them that turn with sword. There is no other play. Now, going first, I'm not saying it's an auto loss, but it's really hard to play. Yeah, that, like, you just got to hope that they open pretty much unplayable or like yeah, which is subpar. One of the reasons why called by the grave is so important, especially going on games two and three, because that, that it's it's so hard to play through that card. It like it just really is. And then vice versa. Lancia gets a lot of mileage against a lot of other decks, too. Like I was saying, yours being a rogue deck, you're not going to see it as much pop up, but people are still going to try to play the Thunder Dragon deck, especially since of some of the success it has. And that card adversely is really good against that deck. Because you can't summon Levianeers. You can't, if some people are playing it, you can't hunt hard summon Titan. I mean, the applications just go on and on. Oh, and the baby guard dragon plays, you can't summon those either. I just, right now, for the current format, especially since you see Orcus decks popping up and whatnot, I think that card's really good right now. And it's, I honestly, I, I think it's, it's amazing. Yeah, I'd say it covers about half the, half the relevant meta decks, right? I mean, you don't want to side it against Salomon Great or Sky Striker. Doesn't really do much. If anything, it helps them. Right. But everything and I think else, what, it, it's fucking great. I think another thing that makes it really, really good is the fact that we now have access to Phantasma, so you don't you don't have to dilute your side deck with so many copies as it as because especially with a card like Phantasma, your percentage of seeing a two of goes up versus seeing a three of and stuff like that. So. I just right now as a generic side, I think it's really. Good. Yeah. So, in your opinion, what are the top three decks? For me, right now, the top three decks. Uh, I think we can undoubtedly say the f- out of uh for first. I think it's a tie between Sky Striker and uh, Salomon Great. Yeah. The reasoning being Salomon Great is such an e- it's like it's such an easy deck to play and it's incredibly cons- like. The consistency unreal. It almost reminds you of like zoo format days, but not with the same power level. Yeah, it's just like you're gonna do the same thing every turn. Like even Sky Striker has a hard time. Like the problem with Sky Striker is you you don't know what your turn one's gonna be because you don't know how many engages you're gonna see. You don't know how broken your hand is. But <laughs> right, but great. Oh, I open debug plus gazelle, and that's combo. Yeah. But one of the cool things is uh, well, I think Sky Striker. We've seen Sky Striker rise in popularity because of it is because it's matchup against Salmon Great so good. Because you have access to your Widow Anchors, you can play just as many hand traps as they can. And honestly, you're a one card engine almost yeah. all the time. Th- Sky Striker's toolbox, uh, main deck toolbox, is just so much better than Salmon Great. It's like, yeah, they have Roar and Rage, but you have multi roll, Widow Anchor, Afterburners, Jamming Waves, and they're all searchable off of fucking anything. The best search card ever printed in a long time. Like, I can't even think of one better. You know, you get a search and a draw. Exactly. It's almost like doing zoo combo without the subs. Yeah, without the fusion sub. We're not going to talk about that. That was a dark time for Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. It was about, <laughs> it was about the same. I, I felt the same in that format as I did during FTK format. With, like, Pendulum FTK or uh, what was it? Not not slash draw FTK the one before that. Oh, that was uh, Danger Dark been... World. Danger Dark World FTK. Yeah, where they were doing the uh, the cannon soul. Yeah, that was probably my least. I I don't want to play. Yeah, you you essentially had twenty four upstarts in one deck. You're gonna see. All right, so I mean, we we covered a lot. We covered our um, regional experience. So we'll probably cut the this first installment pretty early. So Joe, you got any final words? Uh, the only thing I can say is uh, watch out for Lancia, that's for sure, if you're yeah. going to play Orcus. But other than that, uh, no, I thought the experience was really good. Um, it was something, I, I enjoyed it. It was my birthday that day, so I enjoyed just hanging out, playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh. with everyone. Can we can we pause and say how we both packed uh, Phantasme? Oh, yeah, so fu- <laughs> fun little story to end this broadcast. So our good old buddy John here at Orcus, on a whim, we'll say on a whim, we'll save the story for another time, ordered a set of Phantasmes. And we thought he'd have him here by now, but long story short, he didn't get him. So, 
we get to the event, I get my entry packs, and the very first pack I have is a Phantasma. I'm like, well, this is cool. We have one for John now, and then I'm pretty sure Doug was going to cover him on the second one, but he didn't. So, well, long story short, John gets there after me, and then, Lord behold, his very first pack is a Phantasma. Two. We eventually found a third, and we just had an improv two set of Phantasmas. <laughs> yep. Like, I, I was going to play Secret Village instead for the Sky Striker matchup, but just, I just can't believe, like, we both packed Phantasma first pack. Easy peasy. That's all I have to say. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, if you got any discussion topics you want us to talk about, uh, leave them in the comment section. But, you know, it's been Bingo and the Duel Factory, and this has been X2 Drop. Thanks for watching, and check out our other videos. See you later.